All right, y'all. Good evening. This is Miss Shirley OG Gardner, Zone 6B in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you for coming by tonight. If you're watching the replay, thank you for doing that. Also, hit that like button so that you show me that you like me just a little bit. And also, uh, hit that notification bell so that you will be notified of any new videos that I post. So, I'm thanking everyone that's coming in early today. Uh, let's see. Psalms 146 Home and Garden. Nice to see you. I've been missing you, dear. And thank you for uh, that. Congratulations. I really appreciate it. I'm Biased LLC. Hey, Queen. How are you this evening? I saw you earlier. I think it was uh, with T and Big Rooster and them on that channel. Yeah, she got a lot of good information. I want to go back and check that out over again. Uh, who else? We got it back. Yard Garden Flow 21. Hey, good evening. Yes, happy Thursday. Hand pink and hand waving. I ain't mad at you. How are you? Hey, Mikey Mike. What's up, my brother? Thank you for coming in this evening. Hey, Cheryl Faulkner. How are you, sweetie? Glad to see you made it in. Drills Healing Garden Journey. Girl, you had me in tears watching you on Miss T with T. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, I'm so glad to see that you're healthy and happy right now that's that's what i appreciate um the experience was sassy hey hon I, ha I haven't been seeing you that much lately you all right over there girl hadn't seen you for a minute oh okay uh is that k Taliba? i hope i said it right good evening thank you for stopping in this evening make sure you hit that like button you all show me that you like me just a little bit will be greatly appreciated. Jeanette Cruz and Homestead, sweetie, how you feeling this evening? Glad to see you here this evening. Everybody saying hello to one another. Yep, I, I'm going to wait for a minute. Get Let more folks pop up in here and see how they doing. I don't know about where y'all live at, but here, yesterday was November the 1st. Ooh, let me tell you, it was a hot mess yesterday. I... I spent the night at my granddaughter's house and she said, Grand, it's snowing outside. I was like, say what? Looked outside. There was nothing but white as far as you can see. We didn't bypass frost altogether. It was snowing. Thank you, Backyard Garden, for that. Congratulations. I take all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It dropped down to like 29 degrees and it was snowing. You took a little break. Well, see, I missed you. All right, but you're back. Glad to see you. Laura's Garden, good evening. Thank you for stopping in this evening. I'm trying to catch folks because, you know, you can get behind real quick in your chats when you get to running your mouth and you can't watch the chat at the same time. Maria Graham, there she go. What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, I was like, oh, man, I saw, I'm at my granddaughter's house. I did want to clean out some more garden beds, but... That didn't happen. And then today it was sunny. All the snow had melted and it was up to like 50 degrees. I was like, see, this is why they call it pneumonia and flu weather with this up and down, up and down. But I mean, it was cold yesterday. And I still got flower pots with flowers in them. They probably shot, but I'm going to just take them all and throw them in the compost pile. I'm not going to try to keep them any further. This, like I said, it's November and it's cold as the penguin's nose. Well, we used to say cold as the Eskimos. <laughs> yes, indeed. Cold, cold, cold. Yes. I mean, it was so cold. You could throw a bucket of water outside and it would freeze before it hit the ground. And today is a whole different story. So, and I've been listening to everybody's stories that have been watching videos. How in other states, I was watching how, um, who was that? David Corbett Crop, how he had his stuff covered and he was checking up underneath there to see what. Um, survived the cold and, and CC Texas Garden. Yeah, she was talking about putting plants in the car. That cracked me up. I was like, in the car? I know she get her growing tent out. Hey, whole new perspective. Hey, Crystal, how my girl doing? You'll be in the bushes in the bed, not sick. Just have to get up at 3.30 in the morning. I understand, honey. Do what you got to do. I know about them kind of crazy eyes because I used to work the night shift at the hospital. So believe me. The chicken, what's up, sweetie? How are you? Yeah, you're the man with the plan. You know all there is to know about chickens. Thank you for stopping in tonight. You got all your homework done? 
Because <laughs> that's the first thing my mom used to say when you walked in the door from school. Take your school clothes off and get that homework started. Socks in the garden. Thank you for stopping by this evening. Grandly appreciate. Would you say the chicken is 32 where you at? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been surprising uh, freezing temperatures and a whole lot of places that don't normally get it. So, but here it's kind of normal, but normally we don't get snow in November. Um, and it was on the first, you know, it started off the month with a bang. Normally we, don't, we really don't get snow until like January, February, March when it just really cuts up. So that was kind of hard yesterday. G mama grows hard in the garden. Glad to see you in here this evening. Appreciate you coming in. Albert. Miranda, well, hello. Thank you for stopping in. I don't think I've ever seen you in my chat before. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Make sure you hit that like button and show me that you like me. <laughs> Just a little bit would be greatly appreciated. Bye, you sugar. Hey, hon, how are you? Becoming a green stalker. Hello, I saw you yesterday in somebody else's life. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the garden community. Yes, indeedy. You got a lot of good people in here. I was sent home early today before any of my classes could give me homework. Oh, all right. Well, still, you got uh, you got to make up that homework. You got to keep them grades up. Yes, indeedy. Yes. It's so nice to see people coming in early tonight. I know some people are doing it from the bushes. Cheryl Faulkner, what's up, sweetie? Um, and some are, like I said, I retired, so all I got is free time. But some of y'all have spouses, significant others, children. You know, you got a life once you get off from work. So I appreciate you taking time to come in here. Hey, TT, Urban Pantry, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for stopping in this evening. Greatly appreciate that. Yes, indeedy. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, yep, I'm at work for another hour. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But when folks say, ooh, I'll be glad when I retire. Honey, ain't nothing like it. Anytime you don't have to punch somebody's time clock, listen to all the changes and the rhetoric and the politics on the job, it's, it gives you a whole new feeling. I was having problems with having continuous hot flashes. I mean, I would break out and sweat. I would have water running down my sideburns. And my doctor said, it's nothing but stress. I would not sleep a full 48 hours when it's my shift turn because it was just that stressful i i never really felt like that at times but my body let me know thank you marie you like the hat yeah my niece had one and i saw one and i was like well i'm gonna get it she's that copycat i said that's all right styling and profiling i ain't mad <laughs> i love hats and caps because i got such a little bit of hair it's so it's loose right now my head's so little my husband used to grab my head and call me a little apple head. I was like, leave my head alone. That's better than having a big head like some of you men have. Oh, wait a minute. It was a comment there I want to catch right quick. Oh, yeah. When you hit that button, that, this thing goes crazy. Oh, sis. oh, wait a minute. I'm canning. Mike, you canning? All right. I ain't mad at you. Sending a big global hug. I can't type so fast. That's all right. Take your time. We ain't going nowhere for a minute. <laughs> There's a whole night. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. I tell you, I ain't mad. I'm not mad when I see folks on there wearing, wearing them shirts in the mall sometimes saying I'm retired and I love it. Hey, that's how I'm able to have so much time with my granddaughter right now. I'm helping her out with this new baby. My great granddaughter was a preemie and she spent a week in the hospital after she came home because she was having complications. She went back in, they fixed the problem, and now she's so fat and juicy, I can't even hold her. When she sleeps at night, she likes to sleep right up under my neck. And then she nozzle her nose down until she could hear my heartbeat. And then she's there. She won't move. I could twist and turn and stand up. That child will not move. Yes, indeed. And now she's at the stage where she's cooing, and, and mocking me, and I just love it. You know, like we sing to her, I read books to her, make all kinds of sounds, and she's got a little giggle that would just melt your heart. And it's just 
so much fun to watch a new life and an, another generation uh, just grow and develop. And I'm there to get a chance to see it too. Yeah. Yeah, we were. She was cooing and talking stuff today. She was feeling really good about herself, and she's starting to stay up longer, and she's starting to sleep longer at night. We at one time when she first came home, we was feeding her every two hours. Ooh, I wasn't getting no sleep. Nobody was getting any sleep. We was doing tag team trying to keep her fed, but now she's doing real good. Uh oh, look at that! Hey, Tina, good evening. Glad to see you in the house. Yes, indeed. I know normally about this time, T. Now you be in the bushes trying to fix your dinner. How are you feeling? That's what I want to know. I, you know, I saw you Tuesday night and you starting to look like you're getting your energy back up. But, you know, with this crazy weather, I know you might not be having it there like we have it here. I know you still dropping seeds, but I hope you're not overdoing it. OK, I really hope you're taking it easy. You can still drop your seeds, but don't overdo it. Yeah, Mike, what you can? Making sauce or, 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 or peppers or tomatoes or what? Everybody saying hello to one another. Hey, Luscious. Hey, Luscious. How are you, darling? Thank you for stopping in this evening. Yeah, I was watching you one day and you was like, you wanted to go out there and walk, but you was still, it was too dark. You say, yeah, that's, that's, that was a smart move. <laughs> when it's still dark that early, you be on the, on the side of caution, as they say. Oh, I miss those days. Which days, Socks in the Garden? Did I miss a comment somewhere? Oh, oh, you talking about the baby? Yeah, she got that. I call it the new baby smell. You know how they still smell like milk? She she does a, a switch between breast milk and, and infant milk. And uh, yeah, you got that, that milk up under that chin and that neck and it's just layers of fat up, up under here. I just be kissing her and she just loves, she just leans her head over like that. I was like, yeah, that new baby smell, you can't you can't beat it. And just watching them develop each day is, is awesome. That's right, G Mama Girls. Tell him, put some pressure on that like button and show me that you like me just a little bit. Can't wait until I have grandchildren. Well, you know what's uh, the experience with Sassy? This is my oldest granddaughter's first child, and this is my first great grandchild. My oldest granddaughter, she'll be, matter of fact, this month, she'll be 33. So she's not a baby, she's a veteran. And her husband, watching her husband just hold it with one hand it just amazes me you know and he just sits there and marvels at looking at part of his creation there so yeah so this is the oldest of i have three grands and this is the oldest of three and this is the first great grandchild so i've, I've got another generation thrown in there and i told my granddaughter and she knows it already she's gonna be sitting out in the garden with me next year she's gonna be in that stroller they got them kind of strollers that can it's a uh what they call it, uh, car seat. And when you hit the side buttons and the and the wheels jump down and it turns into a stroller and then you take the handle and stretch it out. I was like, man, they got some serious mechanisms on some of these uh, car seats and strollers. But it's nice, though. And I said, she's going to be sitting right out there, put a little sunscreen and, and put a shade over so she don't get ate up by the sun. And she's going to sit right out there while great-grandma and Nana is planting stuff and she's going to get a chance to taste real food. Not all that synthetic stuff, but some real food. Uh, yeah, you'll love it. Yeah. Cause when I had my first grandchild, she was spoiled too. That's the one that just had her first one. So, Oh guys, dog growl and gotta go try to be back later. Okay. That's okay. I appreciate you stopping in. Make sure you hit that like button before you leave out of here though. <laughs> I hope everything's okay. Oh, hey, Mary, grow with me. Good evening. Yep, saying hello to everybody in the chat. Everybody saying hello. Hey, Kay Renee, how are you? Thank you for stopping in this evening. Greatly appreciate it. I know it's cold everywhere. I've been watching everybody's videos and stuff and how the temperatures have dropped. And I was really surprised about Texas and Georgia. Woo, yes, indeedy. What'd you say? T Nog said, You're great. I, I, I'm good to hear that. That makes me feel so much better. 
because I've been talking about you in all my lives, you know, making sure folks send, send out prayers and check on you and make sure that you was all right. Because uh, J- Jody boy, my girl was in there. She was letting us know and keeping up with letting us know how you were progressing. And it was just amazing how you had that kind of support from your family. It is because not everybody had that kind of support. So I had off. I tip it to Jody and Jada because she's out there watering the garden too. I saw her out there doing her thing as well. Fifi, what's up? How are you? Thank you for stopping in this evening. I'm glad to see Adele. Hey, how you feeling, Ann? Because I know you aching and stretched out too. Because let me tell you, I got osteoarthritis and bursitis, and this weather is kicking my butt. It is. It's wearing me out. And I'm just taking one day at a time. Hey, Joshua Gabriel, thank you for stopping in this evening. I had like 12 gallon freezer bag tomatoes from last summer. Canning those that freezer room back. Yeah, well, that's what you need to do if you need to open up some space. Big Roo Roo Rooster Show. Good evening. Thank you for coming in. I greatly appreciate it. Um, got enough folks up in here now. And I think I'm trying to get down to the bottom. I understand when they said they can't try to get down to the bottom of the chat and also answer a question. When my body says sit down, I sit down. I know that's right. It's either it tell you to sit down or you're going to fall down. So it's best to go ahead and listen to it and do what it tells you. That way you will have less injuries and you won't hit the flow. <laughs> Bart Brownlee. Hey, hon. Thank you for stopping in to see. There she goes, Cece. Cece, I was laughing at you so hard today looking at the video about the little seat that you got from that company they want you to, to check out and they sent you the improvement garden seat and it had gloves in there and you put them gloves on them garden gloves you tell your hands was cold i ain't, I ain't mad at you i can't even go out here and mess with this stuff not at 29 degrees Mm-mm. no i'm not coming back with frostbite on my fingers no garden is worth that it, it'll break down it'll be good next year that's right, Mike. Tell them to drop it. MSOG, let us know where, if you have a channel so we can go check it out. Also, your grow zone in your state. So for the new people that we have in the chat, if they live in that area and they want to check out your videos and see what you got going or what to grow, give them an idea. Do so. Country Hustle 101. Thank you. Yeah, we're eating some supper. That's okay. That's all right. I hope your food digests real good sitting back listening to me. Hey, Gail, how are you? Thank you for stopping in this evening. Uh, my topic this evening is how much research do you do on plants for your grow zone? You know, some of us live in the same grow zone, but not in the grow zone at the same time. Like uh, we have, uh, I'm in 6B. And I know there's people in Connecticut and then there's people in Indiana and Chicago that's also in 6B and 6A. So do you know what plants grow best in your area? You know, have you ever checked with your uh, extension program, your county extension program, if you have counties uh, where you live at? Because in some rural areas, they might not have the same setup. So have you... Do you know what's native in your area? Because a lot of times we get plants from other people from other states, other countries um, that we know don't normally grow here. So we have to make provisions uh, in order to keep them alive. Like I had to bring in my uh, banana plant and my figs because this is the uh, this will be the second year. But they haven't gotten big enough to be hardy for our our snow and winter here. Also brought in my uh, Meyer lemons and what else did I bring in? Figs. I brought in a bunch of stuff. Okay. Oh my uh, Miwok kumquat. Um, I I think did I bring in my I'm I forgot to bring in my uh, rosemary and my lemongrass. I don't know if they made it through this no snap we just had or not, but hey. If not, I just have to replace those next year or try to see, try to start seeds inside. Um, I got me some grow lights um, to help get these plants through because I didn't have enough of them for last year. Oh, my my daughter didn't have any children, but nine, 
nine dogs. Okay. She got a kennel or she just really like dogs. <laughs> Miss D Hollywood Garden. Thank you for stopping in. We just said working and listening in the bushes. I ain't mad at you. I uh, thank you for stopping by this evening. Great, greatly appreciate it. Yeah. So everybody's been showing videos in regards to um, how they've been covering their plants. Like I was saying earlier about uh, David Corey with the crop, how he was covering them. And CC was talking about how she was putting plants in her car and she's going to pull out the tent because of the temperatures. But see, the difference between CC's temperatures is that it's cold now, but she said by the weekend, it could be back up in the 80s. We're not going to get that. So you can forget that here in Ohio. We're going to be like this until April, May of next year. You know, it will be getting worse. It won't be getting warmer. So we need to, you know, be mindful of the type of plants that aren't able to stay outside. My garage is not heated. It's just as cold as outside. So I don't put my plants in the garage. I know a lot of people do put their plants in the garage, but I have to actually bring mine in the house in the basement where it's warm and, and uh, they'll be all right. But you also have to be mindful that not to overwater when you bring them inside because they will rot real quick. I learned it the hard way. As they say, ask me how I know. But uh, I've learned to be better with um, indoor storage in the wintertime. So I did get a little experience from last year. So I'm trying to be better this year. Wellness with Frugal Mama. Thank you for stopping in this evening. So, uh, hey, GT, what's up, girls? It Alaska. Uh, please put in the chat, do you know what plants grow in your grow zone? Are they native or have you planted them and they have adapted to your temperatures or your conditions because it's close or similar to where they came from? Because I know some people down like in Georgia and parts of Texas and uh, South Carolina that they can grow tropicals without having to pull them up out the ground. They just might have to cut them back or make sure that they're covered if the temperature drops below a certain degrees. So some plants can adapt to your grow zone and others cannot. So you guys want to let me know. Have you actually taken the time to do the research to find out what is even native in your own yard? Like for me here in Cleveland, for shade plants, forget-me-nots, moonflower, which can be very fragrant, Siberian wallflower, moss verbena, uh, which is a ground cover here, uh, hellebore, and uh, hookahs and ferns are good for the shade garden as well as what else I have over there. I don't put lily in the, in the valley over there because they can become very invasive. But hostas uh, are native in Ohio. Uh, sun loving is like heather, uh, purple and pink hydrangeas, the butterfly uh, bush, uh, better known as the butlias, uh, creeping jenny. Japanese lilac, uh, wintergreen. Uh, I call it clematis. Some people say clematis, a climbing vine that's perennial. It comes back every year. Uh, Monardo, which is also known as bee balm, uh, wisteria, and uh, trumpet vine. So, and um, also known as honeysuckle. So, there's a lot of things that. You don't know that's native in your area that will grow real well, not unless you see it in somebody else's yard and they seem to grow it well. And then you might ask for a piece of it and see it. Will it adapt um, in your garden or yard as well? And that's just in uh, plants. That's not including uh, bushes and vegetables because some people don't think that we can grow celery here and that it can come back every year. I have celery that comes back every year. Uh, um, and my chives and uh, certain herbs like uh, sage and what else I have out there that comes back every year. I got a lot of little small stuff that comes back every year that most people don't think they can grow in Ohio. And, and it's normally cooler up here and it's warmer down where um, Gina versus Gina, Vision, 
for Pyrenees and who say you grow row, they're normally about five to 10 degrees warmer because they're further south than uh, me and TLC up here. So it depends on the area that you're in uh, in regards to what you can really hold on to and grow. And then you can do trial and error. You know, some people try and they say, oh, it came back this year, but it died last year. You know, I have some people say they never pull up their greens, uh, like collards and stuff. They come back uh, in certain areas. Um, they have a lot of stuff that comes back. So it's amazing. Like, I would like to grow, uh, what is that, that roselle all year round, but it's not conducive here because it doesn't like cold. So in order for me to get a harvest out of it here in Ohio, I would have to start it inside to get a head start because our summers are so short. So like, yeah, like I said yesterday, it, it snowed and it was cold. Yesterday was a gloomy day for me. A dear friend of mine, that's my running buddy. She lost her husband and his funeral was yesterday. And he comes from a very large family. So yesterday was kind of a sad day, but we know that he wasn't suffering anymore. So it was a lot yesterday for it to be the first of November. It was snowing. It was cold. Whew, it was a lot yesterday. I actually had to come home and take a nap because it just drained me. But anyway, that's another day behind me. And, and we kind of keep looking forward to the future. You know, we're looking for hopefully better things to come. <sighs> um, Let's see. Oh, uh, Miss Linda, I was I was tickled when I was listening to uh, Drew Healy because she said she's from Louisiana as well. But I could tell because she's got that little accent like you do about certain words and certain things. And I was like, yeah, she's from Louisiana. Yes, indeed. I thought that was so cute. It's just certain words that, and phrases that you say from certain states and what have you that kind of gives you away on where you come from. That's easy for people to pick out real quick. Yeah, hit that MSOG. Let folks know where you're coming from, where you've been. Yes, indeedy. And so the other folks can check you out as well. Um, let's see, Gina. Oh, uh, Tino. Um, I've been watching folks doing a video about the uh, wrap-up, the fall garden wrap-up. And... So far, I've seen you grow, row, do one, and then I've seen uh, Gina versus Gina just before I came on here tonight. So I was like, okay, I know that girl. She be sitting down there. She be coming out with some stuff. It be the bomb, too. A lot of good questions. A lot of good questions. Hey, Bouget. What's up? Glad to see you made it in this evening. Glad to see you coming my way. Everybody saying hello to one another. I'm trying to get to the bottom of the chat, y'all. Mr. President. <laughs> hey, there she go. OCD is check. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Thank you very much. I normally like to pull it down a little bit more because my head is so small. My head's slide. I used to have a hat where I could hit the brim and just twirl around on my head. I either have to put a, a extra hat up under here. You know what I mean? A scarf or something. Because my hats would be loose. If I go outside, I have to hold it to keep from the wind blowing it off. Because <laughs> nothing holding it down. <sighs> All right, y'all. I'm not seeing anybody letting me know. Do you know what plants are native in your area? Have you done the research? Or you just go by what you see other people do? Hey, Gloria Elliott. Thank you for stopping in this evening. Gladly appreciate you. Oh, she rescues dogs. Okay. All right. Now, I know people who rescue dogs, they have a hard time getting rid of them because they get attached to them. Yeah, because once they figure out what their story is and, and how to get them to love humans again or trust in humans again, if they've been abused or mistreated or abandoned, that um, people get attached to them. And then they don't give them give them away. They had that one lady on the news had 30 dogs in her house. Her house was spotless. Dogs was well fed. But they said, you know, it's against the law to have that many dogs in the house. But 
you know, she got attached to them. They were strays and they follow her home and she took care of her. Yes, shorts be the weekend. Yeah. I might hit 46 day, 20 at night. I, well, Michael, you in Minnesota, okay? I mean, this to me, it's not that much different between Minnesota and Alaska when it start coming, <laughs> coming to temperatures. Because you be out, you and your wife be out there shoveling snow for hours. Oh, I am glad I don't have to do that. That's right. That's right, CC. CC, you had me dying laughing. You just kept saying, I can hear your nose, but he's like, it's cold out here. <laughs> said, my hands is cold. I can't get out there, CC, at all. That stuff would just have to turn into mush and I'll clean it up come spring. Because when it gets that cold, I can't do it. I can't, my fingertips cannot get cold. Can't, can't do it. TT said, I'm clearing so I can drop to the bushes, but I'm still here. That's okay. Oh, you're cleaning. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Do what you got to do, huh? I appreciate it. Yeah. You can, you know, put your earbuds in if you have to. You need both hands. I appreciate you stopping in and saying hi. Let me know that you're watching me. So that means you show me that you like me just a little bit. And I appreciate that. Okay. Sometimes I hit the wrong button and I was like, oh man, something popped up. I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know what's supposed to grow in my zone when you try everything. And thank you. Thank you. You know, because I get stuff in the mail. I'll be doing a video on some new stuff. Somebody that sent me in the mail. And I'm just like, okay, I hope I can grow it here. I've never grown that particular item, but I hope I can grow it here. You know, it, with a little... TLC, as they say, uh, and I hope it, it grows and that the person who was kind enough to send it to me, I can make them proud that I, I didn't kill it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you try a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And that was part of the questions that uh, in t uh survey there in regards to, you know, growing stuff. You know, what have you grown, never grown before, or stuff you've grown and won't grow again, you know, Gardening is trial and error and patience. Gardening will teach you patience whether you want to or not. Nothing grows overnight, just like Rome wasn't built in a day. And some people learn the hard way. They get discouraged because they planted a seed today and they look for it to break the ground tomorrow. No, it don't work like that. You know, gardening will teach you patience one way or the other. One way or the other. Uh, wilderness with frugal mama said i have no idea miss shirley but now i'm sure we'll find out great question yeah yeah because we grow a lot of stuff we get stuff from people we get seeds from one another and we feel that when we receive seeds from one another they are what they call tried and true and what i mean by that is that you've seen them grow it in their yard so you know that they are good seeds you see what they've grown They've done videos on what they do with it. Um, they show you from the beginning to the end when they first plant it, when it breaks ground, when it starts to fruit, when they harvest it, and what they do afterwards, whether they freeze dry it or uh, try hydroponics with the seeds or whether they do um, what they call it, a water bath canning with it. Uh, regular canning with it, uh, dehydrating it. They show you how they go from beginning to end on that particular seed. So when they take the time to send it to you and you drop it and you see it break ground and grow, and then you figure out well, how you're going to, you know, what, how you're going to cook it, you know, whether you're going to eat it fresh out of the garden, whether you're going to saute it, whether you're going to fry it or freaking see it or, whatever you know so it's it's a lot of questions to go with uh when someone sees you sees what you're gonna do with them or or cuttings i received cuttings you know same thing when you put them in there you know they grow in their garden and you watch how they care for it then you try the same steps and see if you can keep it alive as well cassandra south fulton glad to see you here sweetie uh i I've not tried trees, but I have flowers. That's okay. But you tried something though, and it's working for you, you know? Um, 
And what's so interesting about it, I'm seeing more men who are getting in the flowers. And I'm surprised that a lot of them like the zinnias. It tickles me how that they grow zinnias in their gardens. Well, we know that they're pollinators and they're also pretty. And we make bouquets and stuff. I, just like Cece took a kiddie pool and she just dumped all kinds of flower seeds in that kiddie pool. I'm not going to lie. When I first seen Cece come out with that kiddie pool and she started throwing all them flower seeds in there, I was like, oh, okay. Do you know if all of these decide to germinate <laughs> in this little kitty boo? Oh my goodness. And I, I still see them growing. And I've seen her show some of the uh, zinnias are still blooming in the yard. And they're just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But it's just funny watching certain gardeners uh, do stuff for the first time and the results they get. Yeah. Would you say, I. I am the same. I just try whatever I can get my hands on. I'm the same way. Somebody sent me something. I was like, hey, we're going to drop it and find out one way or the other. <laughs> That's what I like about it. That's why I don't have a, a kumquat. I want to grow it really bad, but it's not zone six hardy. And I'm in an apartment now. Girl, please. Um, Now, you know, I'm in 6B and... I grow, I got a Miwok kumquat. It's in the basement under a grow light. And I just got two little small grow lights from Timu. And they up under it. Um, even in an apartment. I went and got some of those um, oil pans that you get from the dollar store. They're real heavy and thick. And I slide those up under my five-gallon buckets and other pots so that it catches the water. And I love it. You could do it. You could put it. And a five gallon bucket with one of those pans up underneath it and a little light over the top. You can do that inside an apartment. Don't sell yourself short because I know you can grow stuff. So, yeah, try it. You might like it. No hostas at my place with all the dogs. Girl, I don't have hostas because I got deer. They eat my yard like it's a buffet, like it's country buffet. They just come in and Hostas they hadn't eaten in years. Now they starting to eat. I was just like, okay. Okay. Uh, Gail Hooper says, wow, my salary doesn't come back. Let me tell you a trick about celery. Once it dies back or you cut it ground, pile either mulch or leaves about four or five inches thick over it. So it helps slow down the freezing of the roots and it'll come back. It'll push up through it come spring you can do it try growing it on the inside getting it started and then take it outside if you can't start it from seed buy some celery at the store and and cut off the top half I leave about that much above the root and plant it inside in a pot and you'll start seeing it sent out new growth in the middle and then once it warms up just take that and transplant it outside into the ground into a nice sunny spot. Don't overwater it. And I can believe you can do it. Or if you want to leave it in the pot, you got it in a in at least a, a three gallon bucket so that the roots will have room because they don't go really that deep. And you can do it. You can do it. You know, and if you have problems with it being too hot in the summertime, if you got it in the pot, you can always bring it inside the garage out of the sun, out of the harsh sun. So you can move it around. So, I mean, it's ways to, to, to kind of work it, so to speak, and get around it. If, and, and you can do that, you know. Um, that's right, G-Mama. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Prayers for your friend and her family. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's, what's so crazy about it is that the mother and the daughter-in-law and I, we're good friends and we do a lot of stuff together. We go to the movies together. They're gardeners too. We go to the thrift stores and shop. When we hit the thrift stores, then we hit roses. Then we hit the Dollar Tree. Then we might hit all these or, or save a lot. And then we'll stop and get something to eat. We'll make an all day thing of shopping. So it was the mother and the wife. All three of us together be hanging. So we're real close. And yeah, it hit kind of hard with 
that many. And he has like his six kids. So he was the second oldest. So it was rough. It was rough. And he just had a birthday. He, he, he wasn't that, that old. He's younger than me. So it was, it was kind of hard. Yeah, it's, it's going to sting for a while. But they all putting their hope in the resurrection. So to see him again. So, and I'm going to leave it at that. Ooh, people say I had a big rooster. Hey, Urban, how are you, sweetie? Thank you for stopping in this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, Nicole Smith, how are you? I've, Nicole, I've been watching you and CC. I think I was watching you guys over the weekend. Y'all had went to the botanical garden. Y'all was pulling weeds. Then they showed you how to really pull the weeds with the raking them under. Yeah. What she said, I buy what I like. Have not had teas yet. Okay, I don't know what that last part means. Uh, GT says, yes, I have a few plants that are native to my area. When I was paying for the plant app, I knew a lot about them. I had to stop paying, so I just take pictures. <laughs> just saying. I know that's right. <laughs> Yeah, that don't that plant app charge you for that? Yeah. You probably could give them some some tips on a GT cuz I know you're growing some of those with well, hydroponic. So you can you ought to send them a, a little statement. Let me let me show you how to grow this on the inside. Uh my Katie Gardner got that cold cold too. I love that snow workout. Yeah, okay. Whatever. I I quit Show me snow years ago. I was like, mm mm. Gail said it was 51 today and seven tonight in Milwaukee. Yeah. I woke up, it was 29 degrees and an inch of snow outside. It was cold. We have lots of trees, so we get leaves too. We'll be we be strong. And you know what? When you get leaves, I'm gonna tell you even a better way. When you um gather your leaves. Take your lawnmower and kind of run them over a couple of times. That helps break them down into smaller pieces that make them um, break down a lot faster. And it, it's a real good mulch at the same time. So, yeah, I, I used to like drive down the street and see someone just freshly mowed their lawn and they got leaves mixed up in it. Man, that's the best combination that throw in your compost pile. I've thrown it on top of a corner in my backyard that was nothing but clay. Come springtime, you could just reach your hand and then just pull out all the worms that has come up through the clay and improved the aeration and pull all that debris down back through those holes and broke it all up and just made the soil just rich because clay has a lot of minerals in it. You know, it holds a lot of water, but once you get that, the the warrants to break it up and improve the drainage and stuff. You got some, you got some seriously good stuff. I used to grow garlic in that corner. And then, and then I started having problems with cats. I had the Ashawana plant that's doing well, supposed to be hardy in zone six. I'll leave it out, outside and see since I harvest seeds from it. Okay. Well, that's cool. It's Cause if you harvest seeds, then if that don't make it, you can still try to get it. So, yeah, that'll work. That, that'll that work. But uh, I'm waiting on my nephew. He started his garden and he has chickens. So I was like, did you save me any of the bedding? Because he was giving me all the bedding and I was mixing it with. I take the bedding that he gives me from his chicken runs and I put it on a tarp. And then all my potted plants that has died off or just old soil, I dump it on top of that. And then I might throw in a little uh, peat moss and some perlite. And I just mix that all up together. I don't let it sit for no three to six months because I know it's hot. But when I mix it up with all of that stuff and then I put it in there at the bottom, maybe, and then put some fresh soil on top, I've never lost anything from that work combination. So what might work for me might not work for you. But I don't have three to six months to wait for that stuff to break down because of my summers being so short. 
and I use it in my pots on the side. I use it in my window boxes on the porch. So I use it for a lot of things. So I, I, I don't have that kind of time. And even though I know I tell y'all that you need to have patience, some things I just don't. <laughs> and that's one of them. <laughs> but I know what to do, though, in order to get what I need done without losing stuff. So you live and learn. Uh, it's 37 degrees here, a low of 34 today. That's not too bad, considering that you're in Alaska. Um, I cut down my large hibiscus bush. I did that the other day and covered heavy with leaves just before the first snow all day on Halloween with temperatures at 21 degrees, but melted next day in zone 5B, 6A. Yeah, mine today, it melted. There's no snow out there. Well, it's a few spots, but not many. And it was 50 degrees. Yeah, yesterday it's looking like an Eskimo, and then the day I was like peeling off stuff because I was too hot. 18 degrees low on Sunday. Ooh, well, you in Alaska. And you know what, GT, I tip my hat off to you because, bro, I don't know if I could do that. Alaska, ooh, and your wife and family, they all right with me. They love you real, really, really, really <laughs> to be in Alaska. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Y'all yeah, know who's in his house. La 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 do do do. Now stop there. Hey, la la, what's up, baby girl? Glad to see you in the house. Saying hello to everybody. Yes, indeedy. Oh, everybody saying hi to la la. Yes, indeed. Y'all silly. Y'all laugh at everything. <laughs> you know, experimenting is fun. But you know what I laugh at y'all about? When y'all have stuff coming up and y'all don't have an idea what it is or, or what you planted there because you done planted so many stuff, so much stuff. You're like, well, I think I planted so-and-so and so or I don't know what it, it is. You know, it might be a variety of squash and you couldn't tell me which one, which which kind of squash it is, whether it's butternut or acorn or whatever kind of squash that you like that you plant. You said, well, it looks like a squash plant. So you got to pretty much wait for it to, to fruit to kind of figure out what it is, whether it's um, yellow crookneck squash or it could be zucchini, you know. So it's just funny that y'all be telling us, yeah, it's so-and-so-and-so, -and -so. it's a cucumber. I don't know what kind. I don't know if it's a straight neck. I don't know if it's a pickle, but it's a cucumber for looking at the plant. So I want to see if you guys do better next year. So what y'all need to do now is start making up labels. Just put, just take labels and put cucumber across the top. And then once you find a variety that you like, then put the name of the variety underneath that. So that way you at least have an idea of what you got in the yard. But then I know also, too, that when you always go out in your yard, you don't always take everything with you out there. I try to make a one taint trip for the simple fact. I live here. My garden is a door over. There's a house next door. Then it's a lot where I have my garden at. So if I forget something, I got to come all the way back over here, walk all the way down the driveway to the garage. If it's in the garage, if not, it might be in the basement. If it's not in the basement, I might have it up here because I might have used some equipment on the porch. And I'm like, I'm not running up and down those stairs. I'm not doing it. I just have to try to improvise. Or I just have to come back later on once the sun goes down and gets a little cooler and come back and, and take care of whatever that is. But there's a lot of things that I'm going to try next year. And I'm really working on trying to get chicken wire and poles and stuff so I can close my garden in because whatever it was I in one of my videos I showed you I had one apple left at the very top of the tree when I came back the next day that apple was gone there was no traces of a cord or pieces of it in the yard they they snatched that apple and went on about their little happy way so I really want to find a way to wrap my apple tree 
so that I can get more out of it. Because each year as it grows, my harvest gets bigger and bigger. I got a lot of broken branches in there too. I got to trim from raccoons climbing up in the tree and finding out their fat butts was heavier than the branch and they broke them and they couldn't get to the apples. So I don't know between the deer and the raccoon who got it. I really don't, but I know it's gone. I didn't get it. Let me put it to you like that. <laughs> uh, Nicole, I hope you can. So I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Y'all hanging together all the time. I'm quite sure, CC. Between the two of y'all, y'all gonna grow something. I ordered some of those seeds too. Yep. I'm trying to get to the bottom of the chat again. Oh, everybody's saying what kind of seeds they got they can share with one another. Hey, Shantyman, thank you for coming in this evening. For you folks who's just coming in, please hit that like button and show me that you let me <laughs> just a little bit. will be greatly appreciated. And everybody's saying hello to one another. Just drags people. Okay. If you have an iPhone, the photo app on your phone will identify the plant. Oh, okay. Well, I got a uh, Android that you can just take it and hold it and snap a picture or whatever. And it'll tell you if it's dying, what to use to, to keep it from dying or make it healthy. Ah, Bessie, I'm a droid girl for me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. Uh, Nicole said, I got down to 34 degrees near Houston. Those are unheard of temperatures in Texas. I know it's always hot in Texas. Just like when they had that storm a couple of years ago, it shut Texas down. Texas didn't know what to do. I'm sorry to say, y'all, but the folks here up north, we were laughing. Like, that's all they had. I was like, Psh. That's a walk in the park. And they shut the state down. I was like, wow. That was funny. It was sad and funny at the same time. It was sad for folks who weren't prepared for a disaster because that's what it really turned out to be. But initially, you kind of laugh like it's like, oh, my God, is that all they got? You know, we, we have storms here that we, it can shut down the state and everything the roads the schools everything because the snow is so heavy and it's falling so fast they can't shovel the roads fast enough or the side streets and you just stuck in the house and this is why they tell you to be prepared where they said you know get your supplies together because not always it has to be a bug out where you can grab your bag and leave you might have to bug in you know do you have enough flashlights do you have enough batteries do you have enough candles do you have blankets? Do you have warm socks and sweaters and, you know, hats? And here, um, it's a little better for us because we have gas stoves. So we can turn on our gas stoves to still cook and, and boil water and, and heat our homes in some cases. Some places do have all electric. Some apartment buildings don't have gas. They have all electric. So for the ones who still have gas, I mean, sometimes it's a little easier on us. And so I've been doing this for years. So to me, it's just second nature. And every time I go in the store, I grab an extra bag of beans or an extra pack of candles and, and what have you. So some things is just more natural to northerners than it is for people who live in warmer climates. You know, like when my um, son and them moved to Texas, they didn't take the winter coats when my granddaughter went to Florida. She didn't take her winter coats and boots and stuff because it wasn't needed. But then when you get a disaster like that hit, you're going to need all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, then night click search will find. Okay. All right. I'm reading other people's mail. Hey, he means, how are you, sweetie? Thanks for you stopping in this evening. I greatly appreciate you coming in. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for letting me just a little bit. It's greatly appreciated. <sighs> yeah, everybody talk about how cold it is in these states that's not normally that cold this time of year. 
Oh, so you can't eat more pasta sauce. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike, now are these tomatoes from your hydroponics or your garden or maybe a little bit of both? Oh, there's there's a, uh, an app that you could use for free for identifying certain plants. I don't normally have that problem, but once in a while, I might see something in the store I might like and want to bring home that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you got to show me too. I got a, I got a dining room full of house plants. My dining room looks like, well, if, if y'all seen some of my videos, I have house plants. I'll be doing videos on dividing. Right now, I just uh, made some, a, a bunch of cuttings off my coleus and my Swedish ivy, which you can see back there. That's the baby plant. The mama plant so big, it took up the whole window. I'm taking cuttings off of that and starting more. And I give them away to people. I got friends coming to me all the time talking about, I need a house plant. What do you suggest? And I just plant it up and give it to them. I was like, this is, I give them instructions. And as they, and you know, they call it, oh, it's growing. I was like, all right, don't, don't overwater it. Take your time. And then I take you shopping to get a bigger pot and it's potting soil. And they just keep growing. Some of them still got a lot of them. I got a big, I got a huge Diefenbachia in there that I need to cut back that I got from my sister-in-law. She's passed on. I still got the plant. <laughs> Ooh, I'm way behind. Mystery plants are definitely exciting. Yeah, they are. Like when I thought it was about collards, but it was an orange cauliflower. <laughs> Well, who was it? Uh, Cece said she had bought a bunch of what she thought was uh, broccoli and it ended up being cauliflower because there, the it was mislabeled. That's what it was. It was mislabeled. I've heard people say that the seeds were mislabeled as well and they thought they were growing one thing and then when it started growing, they looked at it and they recognized the leaves and they said, that's not what you know this is supposed to be. So yeah, everybody makes mistakes. You can laugh at me, but please don't laugh at me. Oh, oh yeah, we're going to laugh with you. We ain't, well, no, we, we ain't trying to dog nobody out. We, we're not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. We, we're we not trying to degrade anybody. We all going to laugh with you. We ain't going to laugh at you because we ought to make mistakes. I've been gardening all my life. And believe me, I'm, I I still make doozies. I, and you know what? I have to stand sometimes out in my garden and laugh at myself. And I'd be like, now, you know, that's that wasn't what that was or is or why did you do that? So, no, huh? we ain't, you know, we're not here for that. To put it to you like that. This is a friendly garden community because sometimes when we laugh, it's not laughing at you. It's laughing at ourselves because we might have done it. So we understand where you're coming from. So we're not laughing at you. We laugh alongside with you. When you laugh at yourself, everybody else can laugh. But. No, not here to dog nobody out. I need a marker that doesn't wash away so easy. Well, I have uh, marked stuff and put clear nail polish on it, and it works. Don't wash off. Dark X, how are you? Thank you for stopping in this evening. Make sure you hit that like button and show me that you're lighting <laughs> just a little bit. Also, y'all, y'all can drop MSOG and uh, let us know what state and grow zone you're in and also your channel so for the new people that's in the chat can come and check you out as well i wear a tool belt in the garden i can't keep walking around looking for junk either well i have a a tool box that i put on my little garden cart and i just pull it over there. it's got everything in it i mean from sunscreen to a couple of extra bottles of water a couple of extra pairs of gloves and all my little tools and scissors and pliers and Whatever I think I might need, as long as I don't take those tools out and bring them in the house to work on something on the porch, I'm good. And I try to check and think about everything I need before I walk over there. Um, I went to the Dollar Tree and got a couple of those plastic wash buckets. And I used that for, I got a um, couple of 55-gallon drums of water so I could dip it down in there instead of my water hose, I mean, uh, water cans. And that way I can take more water over to each plant, especially when I was watering my figs and tomatoes and stuff, because we know how much they can absorb the water. 
that, but that's also a good idea. I used to have a, um, a belt that I used to slide the little holders on, like for uh, clippers and trimmers and stuff. Yeah, but a lot of the garden um, little seats now, they got the little pockets like the one CC was showing us where you it's a bag where you can put your tools all the way around it and even a harvest in the middle if you want to. And then some had the ones to slide on the side that you can stick your tools down in it as well. So they're coming up with a lot of little clever ideas on garden tools, on making sure you have what you need when you go out in the garden. But your main thing that you need is your uh, pruners or clippers and, and gloves. And I'm noticing they're coming out with all these new styles of the long sleeves, you know, so you don't get scratched up or, or touch poison ivy or whatever. Also, it's a good sunblock as well. Uh, so your skin is not ex exposed to extreme exposure if you're out in the garden for a long time. Um, oh, all right. That's just Barb Riley saying hello. Hey, Gina, Gina. What's up, sweetie? How are you? Yeah, I was talking about how uh, you got tagged to do the t now chat and how you was uh, expressing what you was will, will and will not do for next year. Um, I think I think Broke had in one of his um, videos about a marker. I think somebody said it's a, like a grease marker that you can get in the paint department that's supposed to be waterproof. That once you mark, you know, your sticks or or markers or whatever, it doesn't wash off. I think he did. Hey, Kay Gil, thank you for stopping in this evening. I don't know. I want you to tell me when you find one. All right. Yeah. Let everybody know. Okay. Uh, Garth X says he's trialing the Milwaukee Tools inks all market to see how it works or how it lasts. Okay. All right. Well, everybody's going to try stuff. Uh, people don't know about Lake Effect if you don't live near one. Oh, well, we, I do because we have Lake Erie that's down the hill here. And when we get certain snows, we know when it comes from the lake. And then further that way is the highway, the 271 and 480. We can tell when the rain comes in from there. And then we can tell from the snow that comes from there. So, yeah, we get Lake Snow Effect up here as well. My sister is closer to the lake because she's down at the bottom of the hill. And sometimes it's snowing down there and not snowing up here. And then we'll get rain and snow from the freeway and it's not doing it down that way. So I'm smack dab in the middle of the both. And further up, it's also what they call it, snow belt. Where they get a lot more snow. Texas doesn't have snow plows or wine. Roses, holes, all our stuff is above ground. So no infrastructure for the freeze. Ooh, boy, that yeah, that that could be bad because you can have broken pipes and stuff everywhere, real quick, real fast. Hey, Miss T with the T, how are you, sweetheart? Yes, indeedy. Below ground pipes, stupid. Autocorrect. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Well, below ground pipes, it shouldn't be as bad as above ground or. Close to the surface, anyway. When breaks, all right. Let's see what else we got going in here. Everybody saying hi. Oh, Gail says she just right around the corner from Milwaukee too. Tell them you live in a neighborhood and you need a, a discount <laughs> on house tools. All right, everybody saying hello. A bit of both all last year is tomorrow. Fill my freezer now. I got room. Yep, yeah, that's how you do it, all, Mike. That's how you do it. Hey, Kim Stage, her garden and her life. Thank you for stopping in this evening. Everybody saying hi to Kim. That's right. Thanks for hitting that like button. Let me let you know. <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh, for real? True, Helen, girl. Hold on. I can show you, but I can tell you. I'm going to be like, Pam, come with me. I'll show you what to do. <laughs> All 
right. I recycle bottles. All right. I think this jar had pickled beets in it. And then this jar was a shorty of Tangeray. <laughs> See the roots and water. See that? These are coleus that I had outside on the porch and I just cut off pieces of stars. So I got about two or three people who are looking for houseplants. So they got enough roots on them that I can put them in dirt and call them and tell them, come pick up your plants. Same way with my Swedish ivy. I cut off pieces, put it in water, sit it in the window, do the same thing. You can keep, I have some plants actually that I've had longer than I had my husband. They're like 30 and 40 <laughs> years old. <laughs> I actually got some house plants that's about 30, some of them 40 years old. They have gone from one house to the next house to the next house. And I keep uh, cutting off pieces and starting new ones. When the, old, when the plant starts getting too old, I start cutting off and breaking off and start new plants and just repot them and I keep them going. You know, people walk in my house and go like, whoa, I thought I had house plants. I've always been that way. So I do the same thing outside. Yeah, you can do anything like that. I, I got a what, what else I have in there? Um, I have uh, I got a couple of uh vining plants, like uh, god, I can't think of the name of them. I got so much stuff in there, I can't think, but it'll come to me. But I have other stuff in there as well. Yeah, I love I, I just like the greenery, you know, in the winter time here, we don't get much sun, so uh. I have it in a south facing window and it's just nice, you know, just have something green inside the house. I grow a bunch of tomatillos. They were labeled ground cherries. They were delicious though. <laughs> That's right. You still ate them though, didn't you? Yeah, I ain't mad at you. It's a good time to ask for a discount on house plants. Hmm, not really. Sometimes they house plants is not that big of a deal for them. It's the other plants that they more or less um they don't try to get rid of house plants too much. Not unless they want to make room for like uh, the poinsettias come in for the holidays, stuff like that. But other than that, they don't normally have it. I used to, to when they had a spider plant, I used to grab a baby off of them. And I had to quit doing that. That's stealing without asking. So I had to leave quit the pinching stuff off like that. But yeah, you can get a lot of free plants that way. <laughs> Hey, PIA, what's up? How are you? Girl, you just been cooking and sewing up a storm and painting. I saw you painting. Who was that with? 755 Media? I think y'all was painting uh, a pair of boots and legs and boots and stuff. I I didn't get a chance to uh, type in the chat. A lot of times I'm I'm holding my God baby. I'm, I mean, my God baby, my great grandbaby. I might be feeding. I had a bottle up under my chin. I'm be trying. I can't. <laughs> Tight, so I'll be watching the videos, y'all. I'll be watching, I'll be checking y'all out, Blue Lotus, and all the rest of y'all. I just don't always able to uh type in and let y'all know that I'm watching. Now, I do hit the thumbs up though, give you that like, especially if they're a little sad looking girl. I have been, I have gone over to the water fountain, filled up a cup, and watered some plants. Believe me, I was like, no, this is too pretty for y'all to let die, and I have done that. Hey, Shaka, what's up? Food by faith. Girl, I can't wait to come back and get some more of that um, hibiscus drink. Oh, that was so good. Oh, my goodness. I loved it. Yeah. For next year in the Soil Family Expo, that was the bomb. Everybody saying hello to one another. Uh, Jeanette Cruz is letting you know she's in Zone 8A, Georgia. TT, I want a garden cart. Hey, girl, you should have jumped on them like, um, who is that? Whole new perspective. Crystal, she was telling you how Walmart in their clearance section, they had all kinds of good stuff. They had all kinds of good stuff in the clearance section. She was cleaning house. I was like, I went over to a couple of them. They were already sold out. By the time I found out about the clearance section and went over there, psh, it, them shelves was literally empty. They had nothing out there. So, yeah, it's a lot of people getting into gardening now. They are. Yeah, those are nice. I, I, I wanted a gorilla cart for the longest. I use paint pens, and they have been working so far. That's what I heard. Okay, Cassandra just uh, 
solidified what I was talking about earlier about the paint pens. They said they don't wash off. So, Cece said, I'm back. Are you back? Are you warm, Cece? I had to go turn my heat down too. I had it on to take the chill. I just turned my heat on today for the first time. I've been sitting here with jackets and stuff and blankets. I said, I'm not running up my gas bill until I'm ready. Then after the snow yesterday, I was still in my granddaughter. So when I got home today, I said, I'm so glad it wasn't as cold a day as it was yesterday. It didn't take the house as long to warm up, but my heat is on now and it's going to stay on now to at least April. Yeah. All right. Let's see what folks saying to one another. Yes, those are great. Okay. So, CC, you tried the uh, paint pens as well. So, you're familiar with them. All right. Um, Miss T with the T, I just want to tell you, girl, you've been having some um, bomb uh, interviews with people on your chat early in the morning. Those are nice. Those are nice. I haven't been able to really listen to you on Fridays and Mondays because I'm in PT like nine in the morning. I don't get out of here till like 11, 1130. I'll be in the pool playing. Ooh, that water be nice and warm in them heated pools. Nice PT. Kind of loosen me up a little bit. Hey, Miss T. Thanks. I had to cover my plants. I know you was I was tickled when you said you got to put plants in the car. I said plants in the car. I knew about the tent you had last year, the tent within a tent. But I was like in the car. <laughs> I said, y'all take cover plants to a whole new level. <laughs> but it looks good, though. You always got something growing and always some. I hope your peas make it though, because I know that cold weather might snap them blossoms though. But like you said, by the weekend, it'll be back up in the 80s. Yeah. And this is why this is the most dangerous time of the year for flu, for pneumonia, for colds, and that C19. You know, that ain't no joke. Oh, uh, yes, a grease marker. I used, I went to Michael's to ask and they looked at, looked at you like you was crazy, huh? <laughs> oh, these are a grease marker. Yeah. I think you would find that mostly like in the paint department, like at, you know, the blue aprons and the orange apron. You might find it at uh, Wally World too. Oh, look, Nicole said, I remember teachers using grease pencils to mark on transparency with that light projector thing. Hmm. Never thought about that. <laughs> CC said, Bessie, you showing your age. <laughs> oh, we all got, got double digits around here. Ain't nobody in, <laughs> in single digits. So <laughs> I get the paint pens from. Wally World or Michaels in the art supply department. Okay. All right. See, that's what I'm saying. Y'all keep talking to one another. You find out what you need. I was also watching a uh, live farmer um, catching all his fruit on Easley Island to take it to uh, Freedom Makers. I was watching those persimmons and those uh, oranges and stuff. Boy, that fruit show look good. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I would love to have one of those persimmons. It looks so good. Hey, Joe's Truths. Nice seeing you again. Oh, honey, you're not late. We still got a little time yet. Yeah, you good to go. Come on in here. Enjoy yourself. Uh, paint pens. Got you, Cassandra. Uh, GT said, all right, all right. But see, that's why you keep talking. You keep talking. You never know who needs what and where you can find it. See all the information we got? And it's just about a, a, a grease paint pen. Nothing major, but it can be major when it comes to marking uh, your plants and they get washed off from the rain or what have you. So, yeah, yeah, that's, that was really good information. And not only did you tell us what kind of pen it was, you even gave us where to go look for one. You can even call those stores or either look them up online and order. So, and also not only about the pins, but also about uh, identifying plants. 
This is all new stuff that you don't always hear in everybody's chats. So we learned a couple of new things today, met a few new people today. So y'all keep this up. Yeah, we we going I'm I'm telling you, this guard community is the bomb. You know, we stick together. We stick together and we help one another out. Yeah, Nikki, I love it too. I would like a house full of coleus. I I want them all different colors. I really like the uh the shark truce green oh my goodness those are so gorgeous because you can mix them and sit them next to anything and they just kind of blend in and just or 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 make it pop yeah they are they are and and the more you pinch them the bushier they get and the more beautiful they are yeah they are the one in the tango ray growing bigger wonder why wonder what <laughs> uh, I used to like Seagram's gin, Bumpy, when I used to drink. <laughs> I don't like Seagram's. I thought to me that was low class. <laughs> Give me Tanger Ray. I don't like beef feeders either. I just, ah, they give me a headache. Same old plants. Yep. Had them for years. Wow. How'd you do that? Just cut them and put them in water. Yep. That's all. all right, I'm going to show you how easy it is. Watch this. Let's see. I got a pair of scissors here. Okay. All right, this is a Swedish ivy. Along the stems here, along the stems, there's little bumps on it. Those are roots. And when you, well, I pinch these lower leaves off like that because there's some bumps underneath there. And I just stick this whole plant in water. I bet you by next Thursday, it will have roots on it and I can start another Swedish ivy. So certain plants you can put into water and they will just keep multiplying. Or you can actually, if they get long enough, you can take another pot, sit it underneath it, pin it down, and the roots will grow into the soil and you could just snip it from the mother plant and already have started another plant. So um, they got like what they call feeder but uh, um nodules like on a tomato like you can just break off a tomato stick it in the ground and start another plant same thing with this and a few other um i can't think of the name of that other plant hmm. devil's ivy that's what i was trying to think of devil's ivy i got pieces of that all over the house i put plants on top of the refrigerator in the bathroom on the shelf next to the shower which they love the moisture you just put, you just stick plants everywhere. So helps it helps clean the air, purify the air, filter out a lot of stuff that floats around. Uh, it's pretty and it's just nice for the senses, you know, just watching something grow. Yeah, so I'm going to put this in some water. And then next week, it should have roots on it and you can see it. Oh, yeah, and they give you a lot of color in the shade and in the sun. Certain ones will just really thrive. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Drills. I appreciate that. You know what? As they say, as you get older, you're supposed to know a little something. I don't know everything, but I know a little something, some of this, that, and the third. <laughs> CZ said, Nicole, <laughs> you heard that no more pinching off plants. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's stealing. It is. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't ask permission where they said it's okay now sometimes you can ask some of the people that work in the store can you have a piece of that and they'll look around <laughs> they break it off and give it to you you didn't steal it they still <laughs> oh but i've actually asked in the department heads you know if if they might they look at it i was like hey i i'm not paying no 14 dollars for that they look at me and they say i oh, know they like yeah, break off a little piece and give it to me i was like yeah thank you yeah, so I've got plants like that, but I asked first. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, sweetie, I do. Yeah, and, and yeah, uh, PII, you girl, you got scared. Every time you do a video, you surprise me. Yes and no. You look like a woman that have done a lot of things in your life, but to actually see you put it in a video, is, it amazes me. And I really enjoy seeing uh, your skills. Like a lot of you are new into our garden community, haven't been here maybe not even a year, or you have, you just haven't had a channel. And now you're coming out and y'all coming out kicking butts and taking names. Y'all not coming out here with no little five gallon buckets, you know, like I got one tomato and I got one pepper. You know, that one video we were talking on the live and you were you were taking uh, tomato cages and, and trying to figure out how to stand your tomato plants up because they was drooping over. I mean, y'all come out here bold. You want to see just what you're made of when it comes to something new in your life. Um, like Miss T with the T, she never grown veggies before. I this girl all over the place. She want to try this, that, and a third. Folks sending her stuff, you know, and she's just been blossoming and she wants more land so that she can, you know, spread out. Uh, like uh, Joe the Motivator, he, you know, the first time we heard Joe dumping a whole pack of seeds in one pot, but now he's showing his son how to grow and do stuff. It amazes me how that you young ones and, and are new to gardening have taken hold of it and how you have embraced yourselves uh, into to really doing a good job. You're asking questions and you're asking the right questions and you're getting you're you're very enthusiastic about buying raised beds or putting a raised bed together or, or getting uh, how to make uh, a trellis for your vining beans or, or, or cucumbers or whatever. Um, I like this. I like that. I don't like this. I don't like that. You're expressing how you are blossoming and growing in something that's new to you. And not all of you have, it's not new, new, some of you have expressed that your grandparents used to have a garden and you might have worked in it as a kid. But then as you got older, you lost interest and you never did it back into it. But now the way things are, you can see the benefits of what they received out of it. And now you can see the benefits that you can receive out of it. And for the ones who have children, you're also seeing the advantage of how you can teach the next generation on how to be self-sufficient. And I just love sitting back and watching that. And just like I said, I got my great grandbaby. I can't wait till she get old enough to work out there in the garden with me. I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just bubbling over of the joy of just thinking about what I can teach her in regards to gardening. And it just makes my heart feel glad when you guys do a video and you say, "I uh, harvest such and such and such," and I'm going to. Um, freeze dried or I'm going to put it in a paper bag old fashioned way and just let it dry. Like right now, all that, um, ah, mm, the herb basil that I harvested, I picked the leaves off of a wash them and I put them in a brown paper bag. I do have a dehydrator, but I said, I'm not going through all the trouble of that. I just put them, I, I towel dry them and I put them in a brown paper bag and I shake the bag every day. And I can hear the rattles. So I know they're drying out. I'm doing it the old fashioned way. I'm not plugging up all that stuff. I'll do it for my peppers. Okay. And my tomatoes. But all the rest of the stuff. I'm going old school. Yeah. I have a large olivera plant. How are they in the cold? Olivera. I bring in. I bring mine in. I'm in zone 6B and it freezes and snows here. I don't know, Jones Truth, your grow zone. If you can put that in the chat, then we will have a little more information on if that's a possibility or not. Because I know a lot of people who grow olive vera in the ground that don't dig it up. So uh, give us a little more info in regards to that. And how cold does it get in your grow zone as well? Give us a little more info. 
and then we can kind of take it there. Hey, veggie farming. How are you, sweetie? I love your garden. I just love the way it's, it's... oh, veggie farmer. Um, I went to find those um arches that you were using in your garden that you said you could find it on Amazon. And the ones I've seen seem a lot taller than the ones that you have. Um, could you email me and let me know if those are those the same ones or if there's a different ones, if you have a little more information? Or you can drop it in the chat to see if anybody else would like to get those archways to go over their garden as well to help cover over um, their plants and stuff. It will be greatly appreciated. Okay. Okay. Um, Grace Grimes, thank you for stopping in. Hey, I enjoy listening. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Make sure y'all hit that like button and show me that you like me. <laughs> Just a little bit. I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> CC, you ain't got a lick of sis. What'd you say? You can't afford a gorilla cart. I have a monkey cart instead. <laughs> All the reason I got the cart that I have, my neighbor that used to live across the street, he passed away and his wife don't use any of those garden tools. And she, and she know that we were gardening, but we were working together in the lot. And she's like, come get this stuff. So I got all of it. Yeah, I, not, you can't get it. I, well, if they ever make monkey carts, I wonder if they have the size of the grill. <laughs> and half the price too. Because I've seen them gorilla carts at Wally World. They was like 99 99 i'm like nah i'm good with the one i got i'll work with it the best i can put some cardboard or a piece of particle board on the bottom so stuff don't fall through and keep it moving hey presbyterian there on my daughter how are you honey yes you said hugs and kisses mm -hmm. yes indeedy oh but that's all right you made it you made it. I know where to find you if you don't, because you know I will call and find out where you at. You all right? Marcus, okay? Where Queen? Queenie, you know I will make a phone call. You, Gina, Lydia, you know I will drop a dime in a heartbeat. Just popped in to speak and listen. That's all right. I ain't mad at you. Excuse me, I'm a little parched. Believe it or not, I drink more water in the winter than I do in the summer. <laughs> Would you say, yep, in the car, I got a video. <laughs> oh, I got to get back on my videos. I've been so busy helping her take care of the baby. I've been lacking and slacking over here, and I got to get back on my grind. Yep. So I'm home for the next couple of days, so I'll be catching up on everything. Everybody talking to one another, saying hello. Hey, Tamika Davis, how are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Those coleus are beautiful. Did you get cuttings? Oh, yeah. These are the cuttings I was showing. The big one is out in the hallway. It's too big for me to bring in the house, so I'm taking cuttings off of it. And uh, I got a friend who just got a new place, and she wants some flowers, so... I'm finna give a piece of everything over. I have a uh, Japanese evergreen. I have a piece for, I have the devil's ivy, or Porthos. That's why I, I couldn't think of the name of the Porthos. I got them in different colors. I got it the solid green. I have it in the variegated. I have a jade plant that I can give a piece. Of. I got quite a few pieces of house plants. I'm gonna give a piece of that deep Bacchia. Yeah, she gonna, she gonna have a, uh, her husband gonna have to come get it. It's gonna be a box load of plants. And when they outgrow the pots that I sent them in, send my pots back, and we'll be good. Brandy's Journal, hello. How are you, sweetie? Thank you for stopping in this evening. Greatly appreciate it. Yes, indeedy. Yeah, we just talked about in your area, are you aware of what plants are native? to your area because i know i was watching uh miss cheryl a while back and she was showing me some uh showing us some hibiscus plants that i've never seen that particular um kind of hibiscus that grows in texas 
And I was like, wow, okay. I would like a piece of that just to see if I can grow it here. But I was wondering if it could stay in Texas heat, then it should be able to stand the heat here in Ohio. But I was wondering though, is it a perennial? Would it handle our winters and come back? Or would I have to put that in a pot and bring it in? Because just because I can grow it in the summer don't mean I can grow it all year round. Uh, Sammy Joe, 1982. Girl, what you cooking? I know you cooking up some good. <laughs> GT back to driving. Please be careful out there. Keep both hands on the wheel. Keep your eyes on the road. I grow new part of those plants like that too. Mm -hmm. I have a Hoya that is so big, I untangled it and it will be at least 15 feet long. I think I got one that's twice that long. It's been in the same pot, in the same spot in my back sunroom. And I've been here 24 years. So I think it's twice that. It has tangled and wrapped around. Um, I got a five-tier stand. And fortunately, the pieces come apart if I ever wanted to take that stand apart. That's the only way I'm going to get that Porthos out of there. And it 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 blooms uh, pink flowers and it's variegated. It's green and white. Yeah, now I got I ain't tell you I got plants from the front of the house to the back of the house in the bathroom, kitchen, dining room, living room. <laughs> plants everywhere. And yeah, somebody asked me once, how many plants did I have? I used to have two hundred house plants. I think I'm down to maybe about seventy five. It took me two days to water them. It was too much. Yeah, it was too much. Yeah, I, was, I started giving them away. And the one I got, I got one growing right next to the microwave. <laughs> I got a Porthos growing next to the microwave. I think it likes to whatever off the microwave. I'll see. Let me see. I'm trying to catch up. Y'all get down to the bottom. Y'all, everybody saying hi. Is that Shani? What's that? Bro? Is that Bryzilla? Zilla? Hello. I don't think I've ever seen you in here before. Welcome to my channel. All right. Do you have a garden channel? Can you uh, drop MSOG? Let us know your grow zone and the state you're from and whether or not you have a channel. So we can go check you out and see what you're about. It'd be greatly appreciated. Anybody in here who want that, please drop in MSOG so we can let others know how to find you. Yes, indeed. All right, my chat just jumped again. Okay, let me put this in some water. I got bottles of water all over the house. And I'm going to take a bottle of water. I'm going to show you all how easy it is. I'll use the one I just got through drinking. I'm taking a bottle of water and I'm sticking this in just like this. And next Thursday, we're going to check and see what it looks like. I was trying to put it out the way, make sure I didn't kick it over. I wouldn't want to clean up a bottle of water. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Everybody's talking to one another. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to drop a line. And anybody want to come up and talk about their garden? What do they want to achieve in their garden? <clears throat> I know we have a lot of new gardeners here. I don't know if you might have any questions. We have a lot of knowledgeable people here. I air dry quite a few things because sometimes dehydrating removes the flavor and smell. Hmm. 
Okay. That's a good tip. Y'all see that from Food by Faith? She air dries quite a few things. I used to do that too. Take white cotton string and just tie it up and hang it. Sometimes dehydrating removes the flavor and smell. Now, I, I could see the flavor, but I didn't know it takes the smell out either because basil can be quite strong. And I got it in a brown paper bag. So I'm going to try that. I think I got a few pieces left that I can tie up and see what's the difference. Well, you said dehydrating. So I would have to put that in a dehydrator. Hmm. The paper bag trick is old school, honey. That, how you think people was drying stuff between stringing it up and hanging it in a cellar or in a dark closet or somewhere? They didn't have dehydrators back in the day. They didn't have freeze dryer back in the day. That's how they used to dry a lot of stuff. Um, like my hydrangeas, I take them out the pot, knock all the dirt off of them and put them in a brown paper bag, put them in the basement. They said every now and then squirt it with some uh, water so it doesn't totally dry out. Sometimes I forget about it. I'll go back down there, open up a paper bag and see new leaves popping up on it. Wait for it to get a little bit bigger and repot it up and grow it the following year. So you'd be surprised. Like I said, we need nature. Nature don't need us. Yeah. Thank you for that tip, Food by Faith. I'm quite sure quite a few people in here didn't know that, including myself. All right, Skilly, what's up? Thank you for stopping here this evening. How are you? Oh, sure, said, I like the arches. Uh huh. Everybody's got something in their guard that we pick out that we really kind of focus on a say. Now, that's a good idea. That's nice. That makes sense. Oh, here go my baby boy. <laughs> oh. I got to tell you about trying to talk and drive at the same time. Well, that's why I couldn't answer, but I can't talk. Uh, okay. All right. I'm fine. How are you? Is I'm it cold enough for you? It's 35 degrees, so I'm, I'm loving it. It's good, man. Is that a heat wave for you? For Halloween? For, no. for yeah. Because <laughs> this, this, this holiday, most of the time it's either 19 degrees or there's snow. It, it, I think you hit a record, probably, as far as the dryness of, you know, today. Yeah, I, I believe so. Okay. I would imagine so. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, GT, what are you growing in your hydroponics now? Just kale. Just kale today. That's it. You said kale and what else? That's it. That's oh, it. okay. I'm, I'm bottling water, bottling food. A lot of my plants, I have, I use a double cup method. Okay. Oh, yeah. You ever use the cracking uh, method? Every once in a while. <laughs> okay. I, I, don't, I don't use cracky that much. It's just the stagnant water bothers me a little bit. Okay. I mean, it, it's been proven that it works and everything, but I don't know. My brain just can't. My brain can't actually qualify the actual. Intelligence, it just it, it just sits down. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, have a good day. Yeah, so that's 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 just my thing. Okay, mm -hmm. how are your chickens uh, doing? My chickens are beautiful. They're doing awesome. I, I'm amazed every day I see them. I laughed at you so hard when you talked about how that you, how amazed you were about chickens' personalities. How you could tell which each chicken, you know, their personality and how you fell in love with these chickens. 
And I was like, that's so cute. I was like, listen to him. I was like, he ain't really got into these chickens. So <laughs> you didn't know you was going to get that attached to him either, did you? I know. And that's just I don't, you know, kind of sense to the whole that I speak the same language, it understands the same language. Yeah. And this is my people, I don't know about this one. <laughs> this one's a little weird here. I say something, and she started responding like she didn't understand me. I'm like, this is cool, Charlotte. And my wife said the same thing a couple of days ago. She was like, I think she understands us. <laughs> but it seems like she got a different type of tech, um, intelligence when it comes down to. Well, what was you saying? Uh, what was you saying to make that chicken respond like that, though? I, t- I told her one, I told her several things, and it seems like she comprehends. Like I told her, I told them, I said, let's go inside. It's time to go inside. They had been outside for an hour, so it was time for them to go inside, and then come back out later. And she was the first person to go in. And I'm like, okay, okay. You know, she, she sees me with the gate open. So, you know, maybe it's common sense. And then a couple of other times, I was like, oh, it's over there. And it was like, she turned her head towards me, but she's looking at the eye that I put in. And she's all like, oh, my goodness, man. And then my wife looked at each other like, did you just see that? Did you just see that? And I was like, it's really, it's, it's, it's been a real thrill to have them in my life. Like, my wife, she's never had pets. Like, she, she didn't grow up with pets. So, this is all new to her, but we're... Okay. Uh, we're okay. Yeah, we'll say, say she getting used to them, too, huh? Oh, yes. Yeah, see, I, I was even out of the house flat um, this morning, yesterday, yeah, yesterday morning, and I forgot to put water in one of the chicken things. I, I thought I had put it on the side, but I got distracted or whatever. She was like, what do you do? So I came back in and had to do the chickens or whatever. Before I leave, she's doing that check on because I'm forgetful. <laughs> I leave the chickens to run wild. Mm. And um, so she knows she has to check up on me. So, yeah. So but, you forgot the water. Okay, well. Yeah. Let's take care. Hey, David Corey. What up, this is David Corey. <sighs> My plans, I don't want to ask the question, what's my plan for the garden? My plan for the garden season next year, I just want, I just, two major things that I would like to produce. I would like to produce corn and melon in Alaska. I get those two things, I am golden. Those are the two things I want to accomplish next year. Now, where would you plant your corn at? In Alaska. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. well, how, wait a minute. How hot does it get for your summers? Do you have enough time to grow? That's what I'm saying. Do you have enough time to grow corn? I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. <laughs> I don't have to manipulate like I've done before. Start things indoors. I'm getting a greenhouse, so the greenhouse will act as a, you know, a barrier from the cold. And just just do it. I've produced one ear of corn, but it was a little sturdy. So I just want to produce corn. I, I want to produce corn. I want to produce corn. And without a greenhouse, I don't believe that, you know, heat loving um, plants is not going to be possible for me. So I, that's what I hope. I just hope to be able to create that environment for them. Okay. Um, well, you could start your melons inside. It's just that. Can you grow them inside long enough that by the time you put them outside, they can give you the fruit you need before your season is over? What I want to do is do it, maybe put it on a, a wood cart or something that has good so I can grow it outside when it becomes that temperature that's ideal. So maybe get like a radio wagon, one okay. of those type of things or whatever, take it out. And then maybe that'll, uh, you know, give it the jump start that it needs. But, yeah. Okay. Cassandra, I'll check my emails when I get off. I hadn't been home. Thank you, dear. Yeah, but um, um, Presbyterian says, I air dry a lot, too. So the herbs and stuff. All our herbs are air drying. So Mike says he does the same thing. Yeah. A lot of air drying. <laughs> 
Do I sound like Daffy Duck still? <laughs> I'm much better now. Okay, I didn't know. <laughs> I seen you, David. I looked back at the chat. I looked at the chat. I usually don't look, and I'm like, oh, man, I sound funny. Is this better now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just thought you was a little nasal. I wasn't going to say too much. I, I understood what you were saying. <laughs> oh. Uh, Healy Mean says, I picked a bunch of peppers today, uploaded a community tab post and sowed seeds and started sales for my winter garden last Sunday. Okay. Sound like you've been a busy bee. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gail uh, Hooper said, I just want to be healthy enough to have a garden next year. One more surgery in January, I think. Then just watch me. Hey, as long as you get out of there, you're going to be good to go. Going to be good to go. Uh, Mike says, I got 20 by 20 inch wedding bags full, hung up. Oh, you drying some serious herbs there, huh? Mm, mm, mm. We, we got a lot of folks who got some skills and know what to do with they, you know, their produce. Like I said, don't wait till it start going back and then try to pick it all and then try to can it all in the same day because you can't do it. <laughs> it's even if. Let me tell you, I'm more busy now since I retired than what I was when I was working. Mm, I can dig it. Wow. Every time I turn around, somebody asks me to do something, go wear this, this, that, and the other. And mm. I had to look. I actually have a calendar here where I have to mark this stuff down because I don't want to tell somebody, yeah, I'll be over there to play cards on Saturday. And I already told somebody I was coming by their house to have dinner. So mm. <laughs> my schedule is tight now. I, I got a lot of my other friends have retired before me. So now that I'm retired, now they didn't pull me in the group. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm baking cakes and, and, and cupcakes and pies and stuff and taking them. So we put it on the table with the rest of the food that everybody didn't brought. And we sit there and play cards all night. Mm -hmm. you know, what kind of cards? Like bid whiz. whiz. Yeah, bid whiz. Okay, okay. Yeah, I like that. I, I will I will play space. I, I you know I can play space, but I'd rather play bid whisk because it takes a little more ingenuity when you do the bid people call it bid whisk. I call it lie whisk. It's the same <laughs> who can tell the biggest lie and get away with it. <laughs> you heard <laughs> hey Tia drum go, how are you, sweetie? Thank you for stopping in this evening. So, um, do you grow um, brassicas inside? Yes. Other than I, kale? Yes. I don't like kale, but I give it to my chickens. Yes, I grow bok choy. I'm, I'm designing a new hydroponic system. Can you still hear me well, or do I, am yeah, I back I to Daffy know. Duck? And now you sound bright, uh, clear. Clear as a bell. Okay, okay. I, I plan to do bok choy in this new system that I'm going to be designing. But yes, okay. I do grow leafy greens. I have a window that's right there. So I'll be able to open. I'll be able to open a little bit more once I get them established a little more because I brought me. I got tomato plants outside. This was like a month ago, month and a half ago. I cut them down. I bring them inside. I get them to root or whatever. And all of a sudden, these little bitty bugs come on there and it oh, just it flourishes. Eating? I yes, <laughs> they were soft body. They were yeah. soft body. I'm sitting up there squishing them. I got some tape. I start using the tape. I make make the alcohol in Dr. Bronner's mix yeah. Yeah. with some other stuff. You know, I spray it and the little short. I had some plants that I had just started the purple bok choy. The regular bok choy and some other plants, but they were too small. So I sprayed them and they was like, aha, let you so. <laughs> I got to restart those Saturday. Oh, oh, oh wow. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's sitting still, Lala. He's not driving. He's sitting still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he ain't moving. He's just sitting in the car right now. He he got to his destination and dropped off whoever it was. And so he, he all right. <laughs> I, I wouldn't keep that conversation going if I thought he was out here driving. I want him to be safe. I can drive and talk at the same time. No, but that makes me nervous. That makes me nervous. 
my mom said, you know, like if I'm in the car with somebody, I, I tell them, I said, I appreciate you wouldn't talk on the phone while you're driving. It's it's a distraction. It is. And let's tell the truth. You know, not every I put it like this. Not everybody can do two things at one time. All right. Yes. And that sometimes I will run my mouth a little too much because I'm not concentrating yeah. on the conversation. I'm concentrating on the driving. So. Yeah. I, I I definitely understand where you're coming from. Yes. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to the second job right after this. Okay. I got about three more minutes and then I'm leaving. I'm going to my second job. Okay. Yes. Well, I appreciate you coming up and talking to me. I got 10 more no, minutes. I appreciate you. <laughs> but, uh, but GT, what um, I got a video that I never released that when I was in uh, Alaska, we went to... Uh, in Skagway and mm -hmm, we, went, mm -hmm. we went to um, oh shoot where the tourists can buy stuff and they had these pink poppies that grow in Alaska yeah there's pink some pink poppies. poppies pink poppies yep that grows in Alaska and they're supposed to be perennials and they come back. I said, well, if they can grow in Alaska, they can grow pretty much anywhere. <laughs> Pink so, poppies. Okay. I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah. I, I'm going to throw that video up just because I hadn't did it. I, no, no. What Annie doing? Yeah, you, you hear? She talking to me. She's like, She's mad at me because I've been at my granddaughter's, so I had to make sure she had fresh food and water. And when she hear me coming up the steps, she's already whining before I even put my key in the door. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The last couple of days, so now I can't get rid of her. So she keep doing this. She want me to rub her. She laying and she jumping in my lap. She just, oh, God. So now I, <laughs> now I got to pamper her for the rest of the night once I get off this live. Yeah, so, she missed you. Yeah, she did. Yeah, I mean, she sits at the door. When I open up the door, she's sitting right there. Mm. <laughs> and she let me know. Where you been? Don't do this again. Shakira, hey, hon, thank you for stopping in this evening. Come back. Yeah, don't do this again. Are you going to leave me like this one more time? She just, ooh. Yeah, she's salty. <laughs> Miss Shirley. What, dear? Have you ever had bok choy? I mean, not bok choy. Have you ever tasted kohlrabi? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You didn't know about kohlrabi? That's all. I, did, I, I knew nothing about it. Yeah, kohlrabi. Yeah, that's old school. Get the nice I, I did. on it and slice it thin. And it's like, eat. oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, at this point, I'm like, Miss T with the T, give me some ranch dress and let me dip it in there. <laughs> mm. I ate that thing raw. I yeah, had I, I I I was making rice. I had cooked a whole pack of chicken. I fried it, baked it, um, air fried it. So I had three different kinds of chicken. So I did that. I did a couple of sides and I did rice. And then I went outside to go get the chicken some greens. And it's cold, so all the leaves are looking all bad. And I seen the kohlrabi. I'm like, let me snatch this up real quick. So I, I grab it or whatever. It's kind of, it was kind of woody on the outside, but I took it in. I put it on top of because I bought a rice cooker, and it has a steamer tray on the top of it. And I threw it on top of there, and the rice got finished. I pulled it out, I sliced it, ate some of it, and I was just surprised. And I called my son. I was like, "Come here, come here." So he came upstairs. He tasted it. He started, He was like, "You ain't got no more." I was like, "Son, that's all I got." I took it to my wife. She said, "Ew." I said, "What?" She was like, "It's a vegetable." I was like, "Lord." So, <laughs> yeah. Well let, well, let me tell you how I cook it. I peel it, cut it up in cubes, and drop it in my greens. Oh, okay. Mm hmm. And that sounds like something there. I, I just, I, I didn't think it would taste like that. I thought it would taste just like a normal green, but it had this distinct flavor that I was like, oh, wow. I was, I was very shocked. You so can, you can eat it any kind of way you want it. You can bake it, broil it, fry it, raw, saute it. it you can do it so many different ways. Now, I've, I've did it where I sliced it not too thin, 
but I added some uh, onions and garlic to it mm. and let it cook down a little bit. And then I poured it over some rice. Make you want to slap somebody. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Okay, yeah. then. And let me so tell that's... you, I cook, it, cook the tops of it with some kale. You might not like kale, but if you cook it with the tops, the green tops off of that kohlrabi, bro, you got something there. It's good. Okay, okay. It's full of vitamins, uh, vitamin K, vitamin E. You got a lot of good stuff up in there. You don't want to cook okay. it to death. It's mushy. You just want to saute it till it wilts just a little bit. Okay, yeah. okay. Extra virgin olive oil and maybe a little dab of butter in there, a little sea salt and, and black pepper. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I hear you now. You tell it, say it so now. Yeah. Okay, okay. Hey, um, I come from an old southern country home and we grew everything and anything. Only thing my grandmother didn't grow was broccoli and cauliflower. But she grew everything else. She grew everything mm. else. The turnips, the tops and the bottoms, kind, the kohlrabi, all that stuff. She had that, and she would take all them tops and them greens and put them together. Please, throw cheese or throw. Back in the day, we just used the salt pork, you know, before people mm -hmm. started. Or, or maybe some um, um, smoked turkey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And cook all to, to the to the meat falling off the bones, you want to suck the bones because the juice is all up in there. Mm. <laughs> Next mm. time, spread, oh my goodness. Oh, stand back, give me room. We're going to see who's going to get to the bottom of the pot first. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Hot liquor. Oh my goodness. Uh, and I like, uh, well, coming from a country from buttermilk. Buttermilk with the hey. hot water cornbread. Kick it with Alvin. Hey, how you doing? Audacity, Don, and I see you. I see you. Uncle G. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, that old school. I come from them old country folks, and we ate good as kids. You didn't go hungry. Yeah. If you went hungry, it's because you didn't want to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> country Hustle 101 says, I'm cooking with Miss Shirley. <laughs> you heard? <laughs> She's saying that straight business, though. For real. <laughs> you know, back in the day, though, we didn't have all them supermarkets to run to with all that stuff on the shelves. You know, when folks came down from down south, most of them had gardens. That's how they survived. They had their own gardeners and um, gardens. And my folks were sharecroppers, so they had the serious gardens going on. You know, you didn't go mm -hmm. to for nothing. And all that you didn't have in there. You went to the, uh, a neighbor's yard and found out what he had. Then you brought it home and canned it or hot water bath, whatever you needed to preserve it. You know, they had uh, what they call it cellars back in those days. So they would mm. put all that together and, and put it in them cellars and carry it on. So it's, it's a lot to be said about the old ways. And so now I see a lot of people's learning that um, what their grandparents used to do, they're starting to do it. And then they're finding out how much they're getting out of it. Uh, David said, that's how my mama cooks, but collards and cabbage together. Yeah, we didn't did it all. Um, uh, uh, what's it? Collards was mustards or mustards and turnips or kale and this and that. Yeah, we did all the combinations. <laughs> you get Alice said, okay, now I'm hungry. <laughs> Y'all making me hungry talking about them greens and cat. It's good. And uh, I never threw carrots in my cabbage, but I tried that too. I, I shredded some. Um, I normally make mine with two different kinds or three different kinds of bell peppers. I would have the green, red, and yellow bell peppers, and I slice up some uh, red onions, and I might put a sweet white onion in there and uh, some fresh crushed garlic, saute all of that down, please. Woo! Mm -mm -mm. I could dig it. My, I made a what is it called? A stew. No, it's not called a stew. I took a piece of meat. I put it inside the crock pot and I added carrots and celery to it. Whoa, was that me? I'm sorry. I added carrots and celery to it. It was so, so good. My wife even said, oh, well, I don't like carrots, but they were good. So I did pretty good with it. Yeah. Have you ever taken carrots and put some brown sugar orange juice, a little lemon juice, and and just baked them down? 
No. Bake them down until till the juice turns into a glaze. Mm -mm. I, I think I've experienced it, but I'm not no cook cook. I'm just a, a regular cook. No, I ain't did nothing like that, Miss Shirley. That's that's easy. Like I said, slice off. You don't have to cut them. You can leave them whole and put them in a 350 oven with some foil over the top and let that saute down. Just let it cook slow and easy. And that turns into like a glaze over them carrots. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's good eating. Well, I see that I got to start driving. I tried to hide the camera and I'm like, no, nah, let me just go in here to get off. But she say so to me. Well, it's two, it's <laughs> two hours now. It's been two hours. And it's a minute. So I'm going to get off of here myself. Thank you so much for coming up and ending my chat for me today. I really appreciate it. GT. Please be careful out there on those streets. OK. Uh, yes, ma'am. And thank you for putting the link down so I could come up. And you have a great day. And thank you for sharing all the knowledge. Oh, you're more than welcome. Come back next week. We'll do it again. <laughs> all right. Trust the process, y'all. Hey, I want to see that plant. I want to see that plant that you just put in water. Yeah. Oh, you're going to see it next week. You're going to see the roots <laughs> on there. You're going to see them. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I see you there. All right. Bye bye. All right. All right bye bye. <laughs> Oh, good night, Audacity Donning. Good night, David. Good night, Kiki with Alvin. Good night, Presbyterian Gardener. Good night, Cassandra. Good night, Gail. Good night, Sammy Joe. Good night, Miss T. If if you're listening, T Nog. If you're listening, Lead Farmer. For all the people who've come into my live this evening, thank you so much for stopping by. As I always say, I greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to come by and make this old lady happy. And as I always say, you always show me that you like me just a little bit. And as I always say, y'all have a good evening. See y'all next Thursday at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And y'all come back now. You hear? <laughs>